netbooks. Remember them? They were tiny and they were portable, but they really weren't all that powerful. If you've been waiting for the return of the netbook, this isn't quite it, but that's a good thing. The Chewy Mini Book 8 might look like a netbook, but it's a lot more powerful. There are two models of the Mini Book 8. We're looking at the lower end model, which uses an Intel Gemini 4100 CPU and Intel UHD Graphics 600 integrated graphics. This model has 8 gigs of RAM, 128 gigs of internal storage, and an M2 expansion slot you can use to add another SSD. The Chewy Mini Book 8 is small, and I mean seriously small. I knew I'd be looking at a tiny computer before the review unit arrived, and I was still surprised by just how small it was when I took it out of the box. Sure, I can tell you that the dimensions are roughly 8 inch by 5 inch by 3 quarters of an inch, or 201 by 128 by 19 millimeters, but I don't think that does the trick. Instead, I can show you the Chewy and a paperback. This isn't even that large of a paperback, and the Chewy isn't that much bigger. Chewy did have to make some sacrifices to get the mini book as small as it is. Fortunately, not many of these seem to affect performance. Instead, the mini book isn't as sleek looking as some of Chewy's other models. Compared to the Chewy Surbook Mini, this looks... I don't want to say it looks like a brick, but it kind of looks like a brick. There's a certain novelty to using the Chewy Mini Book 8 due to its small size. At times, this tiny computer just doesn't seem like it should be able to manage the feats of computing it is achieving. It isn't a toy, but sometimes you have to remind yourself of that fact. The body is made of aluminum alloy, which makes it both strong and lightweight. That isn't to say that the Mini Book is flimsy. It's also capable of pulling off some pretty impressive feats of gymnastics. The Mini Book 8 uses what Chewy refers to as a 360 degree yoga design. This means it can work as a standard laptop, in tent mode, or in presentation mode, just like larger two-in-one designs. Given the 8-inch screen size, you might expect a less than full HD resolution, but that's not the case. The Chewy Mini Book 8 has a resolution of 1920 by 1200 meaning that the display looks quite sharp no matter how close you look. The combination of the screen size and this revolution give the Minibook a pixel density of 283 dpi, well within what Apple would call Retina if this was one of its computers. Of course, UI scaling in Windows means that everything can feel a little cramped, but that's easy enough to get used to and you can always adjust it if you want. The colors are rich and well represented on the display as well. It's fairly bright, though you might have some difficulty using the mini book in direct sunlight. In fairness, this has more to do with the glossy finish on the display than the brightness of the screen. The touchscreen supports 10-point multi-touch. Chewy also sells a stylus to use with the display, but we didn't have that handy, so we weren't able to test it. I have a feeling the keyboard is going to be the make or break point for most people when it comes to this computer. It's small. There's no getting around that. Some keys, like the delete key, are almost absurdly small. That said, I did start to get used to the keyboard after testing the Minibook for a few days. The only problem is that once I felt fully comfortable typing on the Minibook's keyboard, there was a period of adjustment in going back to standard size keyboards. I'm a touch typist, but if you aren't, you'll probably have a much easier time getting used to the keyboard in the first place. Fortunately, most of the keys you'll use for the majority of your typing aren't all that small. The delete key, the split spacebar, and the really strange location of the tab key are likely where you'll run into the most trouble, assuming you do run into trouble. Then there's the mouse. The small size of the Chewy Mini Book 8 makes equipping it with a standard touchpad impossible. Instead, Chewy decided to outfit the Mini Book with a super optical finger navigation module, or SOFN for short. Let's just forget the acronym. In practice, this works like a combination of a tiny touchpad with the track point made famous by IBM ThinkPads. Like the keyboard, using this effectively requires a little bit of patience. Once you've gotten used to the concept though, basic navigation is easy enough. Even once you've gotten used to the navigation module, it takes a while to feel natural. During my time testing the Minibook, I never quite felt at home using this. I would have felt more at home using a standard track point, but that could just be me. This would be much more of an issue if the Minibook didn't have a touch screen, but since it does, you can pretty much ignore the navigation module if you don't like using it. 
Chewy's marketing around the MiniBook 8 makes it clear that this computer should be able to serve as your only PC if that's how you want to use it. This is a clear difference from the netbooks of old. Those were basically for browsing the web, and that's pretty much where it started and stopped. The MiniBook can do a whole lot more. Even though we're looking at the less powerful model, the computer rarely, if ever, felt sluggish during standard use. Running Geekbench 4.4.1, the MiniBook 8 got a CPU score of 1812 for single-core performance and 5510 for multi-core. The GPU received a score of 9050. That's higher than both the Chewy High 13 tablet and the 14.1-inch Chewy Lapbook. The MiniBook 8 sent to me for testing arrived running Windows 10, and right now, that seems to be the only way you can order it. That said, an option on the box seems to indicate that Chewy may one day sell the MiniBook preloaded with Linux. Chewy has even released a version of Ubuntu 18.4 that works with the MiniBook 8. The MiniBook is equipped with a 26.6 watt hour battery. I routinely got around 8 hours of use out of a charge, though this lowered somewhat when running benchmarks and other hardware intensive apps. As always, you may get more or less depending on how you use it. Another handy thing when it comes to mobility is how the MiniBook charges. It uses a standard USB-C plug for charging with a 7.6 volt input for fast charging using the PD standard. This means you can easily top up the battery with a battery pack. Chewy says the MiniBook supports anything above 12 volts, which is pretty common these days. When it comes to recharging the battery, the fast charging helps. From a completely drained battery, you can expect a recharge to take a little over three hours. How important is mobility to you? That's the main question you should be asking yourself when it comes to whether or not you want to buy the MiniBook. The cramped keyboard and the replacement for a mouse take some getting used to, but if you crave portability, you'll get used to them. That said, it may be tough to come to terms with the price. At 434 US dollars for the model we're looking at, or 534 for a model with a Core M3-8100Y processor, the MiniBook isn't overpriced, especially considering how relatively powerful it is. It just feels like it should cost less than it does, especially when you look at the price of some of Chewy's other computers. Don't forget that this is a very capable computer, surprisingly so given the form factor. If you've been pining for the glory days of the netbook, this isn't just the next best thing, it's better.